So now, uh, once we uh, talk about introduction of electroanalytical chemistry, so let's move to the next part, which is electrochemical cells. So there are many ways to categorize the electrochemical cells. There are many ways to categorize the electrochemical cells. The first way that you have learned it is by operation, by operation. And here you see the word galvanic cell and electrolytic cell. What do, you, what do I mean by operation? So electrochemical cells can be constructed to drive either spontaneous reaction or non-spontaneous reaction. If you want to drive a spontaneous reaction, that's going to be galvanic cell. Or sometimes you will see the word voltaic cell. That's the same thing. And it is used to drive the spontaneous reaction. And it is spontaneous because you convert the chemical energy to electricity. I think the most classic example here is the copper and zinc cell. If you have uh, two half cells, one half cell is zinc and zinc two plus, and another half cell is copper and copper two plus, you know that uh, because the electrode potential of copper is higher than zinc, so uh, this copper half cell is going to have the reduction reaction. So copper two plus will be reduced to copper solid and deposit on this copper electrode. In contrast, the zinc here will be oxidized to be zinc two plus. So you will lose some of the solid here and you get more zinc two plus as a result. And this is oxidation, right? And we call the half cell or the electrode which have the oxidation as the anode. So this is the uh, basic vocabulary here. <coughs> But if you put the volmeter here, you can read out the electrical potential or the electromotive force or the voltage. There's a lot of words to call this number or the cell potential. And this cell potential, you can use it like to construct the battery or to drive uh, your car or whatsoever. So this is the galvanic or voltaic cell. In contrast, we have electrolytic cell, which is used to drive the non-spontaneous reaction. So, so to do this, you convert the electrical energy to chemical energy, or basically you convert the electricity to chemical chains. So this is to flip from the galvanic cell. So for example, if you consider the, the same cell, and you know that uh, the first, the, this galvanic cell have 1.1 volt. So if you want to flip the sign of the reaction or if you want to flip the galvanic cell to electrolytic cell you will put the external energy or external voltage more than this number so for example you may use uh, you may put 1.2 volt or you may use like uh, a, a battery so to flip the reaction so now your cathode your copper cathode is going to be anode instead so your copper solid will be oxidized to be copper ion instead your solution will turns more blue and your zinc half cell is going to be cathode now from anode to be cathode so your zinc plus is going to be reduced to be zinc solid so this is by operation the first way how to categorize the cells the second way to categorize the cell is by reversibility and there are two categories the first way, the first uh, type is reversible cell. The second type is a reversible cell. So you see the word reversible, so you can imagine or guess it. Reversible cell is the cell if you flip the star, if you flip the cell, or if you're reversing the current, you will just reverse the reaction. Like this one, if you just flip the sign by put by putting the external energy. Then you get the same. Then you get the same reaction. I mean the the exact uh, reverse reaction, like this one uh, copper copper reduction zinc oxidation. And you put the external energy here. You put you get uh, copper oxidation and zinc uh, reduction. That's the exact uh, opposite way. So that's the reverse reaction. 
So in the example in real life, like your car battery, your car battery, right? So in general, it's it's going to be the galvanic cell, I believe you drive the car and you have the lead acid batteries. So here you have like, this is the picture from Jen Kim. So this is the lead oxide and you have the lead here as well and in acid and your reaction will give you the lead sulfate and water. So this is uh, when you use the car. But now if you want to charge, if you want to like this to charge the battery, you can just put the external energy to it. And this is going to be the, the opposite uh, reaction, right? Your lead sulfate will be convert to the lead oxide and lead. And you, can, you will also see the reversible cell in the rechargeable battery or in your cell phone or your laptop. So that, that's the reversible cell. Another type is a reversible cell when you cannot reverse. You can, it is either you cannot reverse the, the reaction or if you reverse the reaction, it gives you something else. This is a, a reversible cell. So for example, this is the button battery, button battery in your, maybe your calculator or your watch. Uh, you cannot charge it, right? you cannot charge the battery. So this is a reversible cell. So that's the second way to categorize the electrochemical cell. The third way is to categorize by the structure. So the first uh, type is the cell with liquid junction. And the second type is the cell without liquid junction. The example of the cell with liquid junction is like the zinc, that zinc and copper cell. What do, what do I mean by liquid junction? It means that you have like more than two portions of the liquid. You, yeah, in this case, you separate the liquid, which is zinc solution, zinc ion solution and copper solution. And you will have another uh, junction, which is the junction between zinc solution and this saw bridge. This is another junction. And this is another junction as well. The junction between copper solution and the saw bridge. So this is cell with liquid junction. Another type of the cell is called cell without liquid junction. So basically you have everything in the same place. Like for example, you have a cadmium solid, a cadmium electrode here as the solid, and you have silver solid as your electrode here. And in the solution, you have cadmium chloride as the solution, right? Cadmium chloride is basically cadmium two plus, right? And your silver chloride here is the white solid powder coated on the silver electrode. You can see that uh, this cell has only one portion of the liquid or the solution. So it doesn't have any liquid junction. And that's why it is called cell without liquid junction. So any question on this? Any question on the types of electrochemical cells? Okay, so I assume no question yet. So uh, once you know the electrochemical cells, now you should be able to know or to describe the conduction in electrochemical cells. So if you have learned physics, you connect all the circuit, right? And you have everything in metal, like the electrical wire and the solid battery or the solid uh, electrical element, uh, circuit element, something like that. So that's only one type of uh, conduction. But now in electrochemical cells, you see that we have solid and we have solution as well. So how does the electricity flows work. So uh, the flows of the electron give you the current, right? So that's at least what you have learned yeah, from uh, physics. So there are three types of ele electrical conduction in electrochemical cells. The first type is called electri electronic conduction. Electronic conduction. So basically here you can see that we have solid electrode and we have the electrical wire and electrical conduction, electronic conduction occurs in electrical wire by the movement of the electrons in wire. 
and the electrode as well. So you can see that the solid can mean can contains only uh, electrons, uh, right? So it is uh, electronic conduction. So here you have electron uh, flows and give you the current. So that's uh, the first type of the conduction. The second type of conduction is called ionic conduction. <clears throat> and from the name, you can see that ionic conduction is the conduction based on the ions. You have it in the solvates and in the solution as well. So in the solution, in the solution, maybe you deplete the zinc ion, and then now you have the movement of zinc ion here and the movement of copper ion here. And the flows of the charge is, of course, the current as well. So I by I is equal to the Q by dt, right? So that's why uh, the movement of the charge gives you the current. So this is in the beaker in your half cell and also in your salt bridge as well. For example, if your salt bridge is potassium chloride saturated, once you operate the cell, that's going to be the flows of the chloride ion and the potassium ion to preserve the balance, the electrical charge balance. So this is the movement of these ions also contribute to the ionic conduction as well. So we have the electronic conduction, we have the ionic conduction. But the third uh, way of the electrical conduction, and it is the most important in uh, this area, is called electronic ionic conduction. So this is two parts, electrons and ions from the name. And electronic ionic conduction occurs from the redox reaction at the electrode interface. So let's consider this. So let's consider here. Here we learn that uh, the sink can, can be reduced. For example, the sink can the, in the sink can be reduced here, and the electrons and the electron needs to flow to meet the sink. So this is why we call it electronic ionic conduction. The sink tries to combine with the electrons to complete the current. So after this, the electrons from electron from here will flow in the circuit and the sink will flow in this uh, solution. And at this interface, you have a uh, copper oxidation, for example. I mean, it should be reduction, but I draw it as oxidation, yeah, like just for fun. So here you can see that uh, both parts has to occur together. So electron needs to move from the copper to move from the copper to copper two to get to give you the copper two ion. So copper in the solution, copper two in the solution gonna move uh, from the electrode, and your electron from here gonna move to the circuit, or move from or move to the circuit. So the combination of the electrons flow and ion flows at this electrode interface is called electronic ionic conduction. And this is where the electrochemistry occurs. So that's why I say it is the most important part in these electrochemical cells. Otherwise, we don't call it electrochemical cells, right? It's if nothing is happened. So we have electronic conduction, ionic conduction, and electronic ionic conduction in the electrochemical cells. So any question? So if it is galvanic cell, if it is galvanic cell, I believe the electron should flow to the right. The electron should flow to the right, which means that zinc will give you the zinc uh, will give you the electron to be a zinc two plus and then the two electrons will flow along this circuit to the copper electrode where your copper two ion will receive the electron at this interface. So this is complete this part of the circuit. So to complete another part of the circuit, your ions in the cell bridge must be able to flow to balance the charge. So this is three parts of the electrical conduction.